Hello, user. Welcome to the video. Today I will be explaining why solo leveling might just be the greatest in my eyes and how it enchants you. Before that, a brief overview about the position solo leveling is on. So, usually an author writes a novel. This series of novel is written by Chu Wong. Then it turns into a series with overwhelming popularity in the novel community. It advances to become a manga and with many chapters and then seasons and hardcore fans, it becomes an anime. This is usually where they get most of the audience and um, there are always exceptions to this of course. But solo leveling is on its verge of entering the fourth stage right now. And it enchants you in 10 chapters. You get to know that Earth had these gates popping up at random places filled with monsters. This led to evolution of some humans who were tasked to wipe out uh, monsters in these gates. Otherwise, in seven days, they will be able to pass through to Earth and wreak havoc on an unprecedented level. These guys were known as Hunters, classified from grades S to E. Then we are introduced to the protagonist of this story, a noob who is regarded as the world's weakest hunter, who got injured in the lowest of the ranked dungeons and faced countless threatening injuries from countless other low-ranking dungeons. He was somehow favored by a healer and hence was able to continue on his path. His determination sourced from enough money to treat his paralyzed mother and securing his sister's future. In 10 chapters, we are introduced to his challenge. A devil seemingly masquerading as God. It all began with a vote to fight the boss, take all loot, or retreat and form the guild members and let them take out the boss. The votes had been cast, it was a tie, 8 to 8. The deciding vote was in the hands of the protagonist and he decided to face the boss. Now, let's take a moment and analyze the characteristics of these side characters to get a better picture of what they are and what they will do in the presumably grim situation that will be the boss fight. Kim Sung Shik and Bak are seemingly good acquaintances. They both know the dangers of the dungeons and so Bach retired, but due to family's financial situation, he was forced back into the business to secure their livelihood. And then Sung enters the scene. Being greeted by a fair share of hunters, not due to reverence of his perseverance, rather being regarded as the world's weakest. A silent confirmation that the dungeon in which he enters will always be easy. And then we are introduced to Juha, who might be the female lead due to being kind towards the main character or a scheming female. The leader is Mr. Song, a kind, considerate hunter with a disposition built to lead and has a quite high rank along with speciality being a DPS. They cheese through the dungeon with main character being injured as usual. Then they come across a double layer. A double layer means plenty of rewards that won't even be seen in the best of the s rank dungeons or monsters that again won't be seen even in the worst of the s rank dungeons. Each character had their own goal, but due to main character's greed, they were forced to act as a team. 
and venture into a substantially dangerous and potentially rewarding grounds. And then they opened the door. They enter a throne room of sorts with blue flames ablaze, showing guards and musicians surrounding a throne. A king sat on it. Quick assumption for the blue flame is that fire ascended mankind to the next age, and blues generally symbolizes sky or open heaven for the sake of grandeur. So it's literally an open path for ascendance. They read the commandments of Carthenon's temple. First, worship the Lord. Second, praise the Lord. Third, prove your faith. Those who do not follow these commandments will never to return alive. <laughs> and swoosh, the doors are closed. And the Lord statue has shown some movement. Nervousness is building up until one guy couldn't take enough and goes for the door. The first casualty occurs and panic ensues. People are terrified and the Lord makes a move. The leader can't keep his cool and all teammates have seeds of fear taking root. All except one. Our main character had too many near-death experiences and hence acts on his gut feeling. Taking role of a leader slash advisor, he yells at everyone to duck. Those who were drowning in doubts were vanquished, and survivors start revealing the true nature. According to John Truby, a specialist writer, you will know more about the characters by seeing their reactions or decisions made under pressure. And under the fear of death, these masks were starting to unveil. The B-rank healer was the first to go. She laid paralyzed by fear. The other healer was obliterated, and the last one was suffering from shock. The leader's arm was cut off, facing such ominous foes, despair runs among the allies. With one self-obsessed resistor, all are hushed. By bowing down, they fulfill the first commandment. Two more to go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because he has started to move. And that gigantic statue will squish you. A member of the Christian choir tries to pacify this Lord and fails. Somebody has given up and those who were close to the guards and too close to the walls, it's the guards, and then a lot of others just got sliced, leaving six survivors. They finally figure out the statues with instruments are not only actuated per person, but fulfills the second commandment with a leg lost by the main character. The distorted hunters grieve the dead and lament their fate and an altar rises. The third commandment and the final trial has begun. Prove your faith. A sacrificial altar appeared and every hunter lights a flame. Six hunters trigger the final mechanism, the final challenge. The leader is the first, forced to take responsibility by the crowd to appear on the altar. But it took all of them to trigger the mechanism, so... <laughs> Idiots. The door is now open statues 
there to life. With blue flames around the altar, seem to fade with time. With a symbol game of statue, rules watch closely if statues move. And they will remain stationary as long as eye contact is maintained. Failure to do so will result in death. You know, one of those ordinary games you played as a child? Exactly that. With death inching ever so closer, somebody makes a run for it and succeeds? An orange flame disappears and the guards inch ever so closer. Two others apologize and scurry towards the door. The leader and healer are then forced by the main character to run. As he alone faces these adversaries, he is massacred by the guards with every strike threatening to break the thread of fate. Just before the final strike though, the flames disappear and the system asks the host to choose between life as a player or death. So that's the end of the description. Just some fun theories I had on the colors used. Orange flames signified passion, energy in its primest, a key to human evolution. A hunter. Blue glow statues were showing false prophets and blue flames disappearing around the altar were showing the time it takes to enter heaven. The false exit not being a trap was ingenious and very welcomed by me. All in all, hope you enjoy this video. If you do, like, share and subscribe. And please don't forget to read this manga. The link's below in the description if it piqued your interest. And um, just have a great day. See ya.